Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. Now I have for you here a conundrum, a checker problem. How do you go about playing 2-1 here as white? Now notice it is a money game and white currently owns the two cube. I'll give you a moment to think about it and we'll also add that if you get this correct, I will be very impressed. So take a moment uh, to think about it. Let's have a look at the answer. Now the correct move is 24 to 22 and amazingly 2 to 1 resulting in this position. Now this looks very counterintuitive because not only are we breaking our board as white going from a 5 point board to a 4 point board but also we are effectively killing a checker by putting another checker onto the ace point which we cannot move any further forward except when we bear off so we call that a dead checker now you may be thinking well why is this the correct play well in this video i will talk you through the rationale and the reasoning behind this play and then hopefully it will be illuminated and it is an elegant and beautiful play and like most things in backgammon when you know the answer it seems blindingly obvious um, but there is an elegance to it now what do we do when we decide what the best move is what is the groundwork to help us prepare us to find the right answer and two things really are going on the first thing we need to think about is game plan now what is Green's game plan here? Well we can see that Green is up in the race by a big margin of 38 pips. So Green's game plan is to simply race these checkers around the board. Green has already taken 12 checkers off and only has 3 remaining. So Green simply wants them to have safe passage around the board with as little interference as possible. Now we as white are not playing a racing game plan because we are down in the race so we instead want to create contact and we want to try to stop green coming around the board and contain him by creating conflict and making his passage more difficult so that's what's going on now secondly as well as game plan we need to think about roles which roles are bad for our opponent and which roles are good now this is something that strong players would do as a matter of course. They will rifle through the index of roles before they make any checker play. It will help them inform which checker play to make, which will lead to fewer errors and blunders and also lower their PR. So there is a shortcut um, to finding out which roles are good and bad. And what we do is we hover over the move and we make a right click on the mouse. And then we go down to dice distribution. Now here from white's perspective, these are the roles that green is going to play next. And the plus means all of these lead to an increase in our winning chances as white after we have made the correct play. Now if these were minuses, then that would be a decrease in white's winning chances after green has played. So here we can see that these rolls at the top are especially bad for green after we have made the correct play. 5-2, 4-2 and 2-1 all lead to a big increase in white's winning chances and a big decrease in green's winning chances because this is from the perspective of white. Now notice that our winning chances at the moment are only 48% as white so we are not the favorite so we need to do something drastic to try to turn the game in our favor and this is why we make this play 24 22 and 2 to 1 now let's look at the worst role for green 5 2 so I'm just going to open that up in another window now after we as white have hit with a 2 and played one, two to one. 
when green rolls a 5-2, it is a forced move. Green has to enter on the 2 and then is forced to break his anchor with a 5. And this is also true of 4-2, also where he would enter on the 2 and play the 4 because he would have to play the full roll. And 2-1 isn't that much better either because green would enter and then be stuck being unable to play the 1. Now, What's key is, after we made the right play, we are forcing green to break the anchor. And that is central to understanding this position because then our winning chances go up by about 19%, from 48 to now 67%. And green ends up in this position, which is very vulnerable and very advantageous to us as white. Now, even though we are on the bar as white, our winning chances have shot up because we enter with 36 rolls and we can simply keep pounding away at green's blots here. And pretty much every number hits. We enter and we can hit with ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives. So it's very powerful. And of course, we do not mind being hit back as well as white because we are already down in the race. So getting another checker back is not a big deal. And of course, having checkers back gives us better control of the outfield. So when green comes here into this quadrant, we have ammunition to hit him back. More numbers work better for us as hitting rolls and so on. So here we can see that this is pretty dreadful. And now if we look at the dice distribution again, now we're looking from green's perspective. Now what you will notice here is that now we have these tower of minuses. So this means that pretty much whatever white rolls after green has made this play is going to be bad for green from green's perspective and that's what all these minuses mean so again that informs us as to why the play at the beginning was correct why breaking our board was correct because we would force a bad 5-2 and a bad 4-2 and then we would end up having all these great follow-up rolls where green's winning chances would decrease all of these are minuses. So saying that basically green is in a very bad situation where pretty much anything we play from here as white is going to be good for us and improve our winning chances. Now, what I want us to, to do is to look back at the original position and look at some of the candidate plays because another way to understand which play is the best is to rule out the plays which aren't as good. Now you may have chosen for instance to do this to hit and to continue but the problem with this is we are not breaking green's anchor as we did before. We hit and then green can enter with a four and jump off with four five four six and double four and then green also has some good outfield control to stop us when we come around. We can also look at this play where we hit, we play 7 to 6, and again green doesn't break the anchor. He comes in with a 4 and hits us with a 3, so that's not quite as good. You may have chosen to play something safe like this, hitting and 6 to 5, which retains the integrity of the 5 point board. But the problem with this is, again, green keeps the anchor, but also we have made a stack here and created an inflexible position for ourselves as white, having this stack in front of the anchor. Another thing we might have chosen to do is not hit at all. We might have played 24 to 23, 23 to 21. But the problem is there, we are giving Green some jokers and that feed into his game plan. We are giving him double four, double five, double six, and even combinations such as six five, six four, and five four are really good for him jumping both checkers off the off the anchor, the double falcon into the outfield and, and waiting for us to come round. Sure, there are still some bad rolls there but we cannot allow green to have six really good rolls, three of which would be, would be joker doubles, um, which would be great for his race. And one last point I just want to make is that when you get a tricky roll such as this, 
then always play the easy number first and worry about the difficult number afterwards. Now here, the two is pretty clear and obvious because we are down in the race and we want to send that checker back a lot of pips to make the race um, closer, right? We're down by about 40 pips by hitting, then we'll be down by about 20 pips. So it's a good idea to hit with a two and then we think about what to do with the one afterwards. And then when we go through the good and bad rolls, think about what's going to happen to Green's position, then that leads us to finding the best play like so. Not an easy one to find over the board, but I hope that uh, you know explanation was uh, illuminating in some way i think it's a fabulous play it's very elegant and it's something yes that i would find tricky to find over the board always think of game plan and always think of good and bad roles go through the candidate plays also and use the dice distribution function by clicking on the right mouse button and then you will bring that up here and then that will yield a lot of useful knowledge in helping you understand and break down positions further. Check out my other videos on game plan and other checker aspects and see you next Wednesday. Goodbye.